Hi there, I'm Lee, and this is Vision Eternity Ministries. Jesus isn't content with the way things are, because with the way, the way things are, many of us will perish. He's waiting for us to get ready, and He's telling us the biggest problem is that we don't know Him to do His will, Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. And many on that day are going to show up as confused because they're going to say, but Lord, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He's going to say, I didn't know you. Away from me, you who practice lawlessness. And so the first thing he's saying is kind of in verse 23, I didn't know you. And if you don't know him, how can you practice his will? And if you don't know him, you won't know his will is good and perfect. And that's why Romans 12, 2 says to change your mind, to think his way, so that you can prove his will is good and perfect. So if you don't know the word of God, which is his will, you don't know him. He is his word. And if you don't know his word and you don't know him, you're not going to trust that his will is good. So the first thing you have to do is initiate that time to look at the Word and get to know Him. And as you look at the Word and get to know Him, and you start practicing as well, doing what He said, He's going to make Himself so real to you that you won't be able to deny Him. Not everyone who saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the word of my Father which is in heaven. And He said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in that name, in your name did many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who work iniquity. So you're going to be doing sin if you don't know his will. That's what iniquity, that's what iniquity means, is sin. And then when we um, check out that word will, this is an amazing part. This is what you don't know. This is why you're not doing his will. So it's defined as what one wishes in the interlinear Bible, what one wishes or has determined shall be done of the purpose of God to bless mankind through Christ, of what God wishes to do, wishes to be done by us, his commands, his precepts. His will, His choice, His inclination, desire, and pleasure. And it is His pleasure to bless us. If you look at the Word of God, if you don't look at it, you're not going to know this, but all throughout His Word, He talks about blessing us, but He can't do that until we choose Him. And He's already blessed us with favor that we don't even deserve before we choose Him. I mean, look at the air that you breathe in the beautiful world that you live in, and, and He just takes care of His creation, His, his, his um, children. But to be blessed further, we have to move into His kingdom by doing His will. We have to move all the way in. We have to do His will. What He says is good, not killing, not stealing, um, not criticizing each other, doing good to others. That is His will. That is the good that He has for us. He's giving us those good intentions to live by because He's good, because He is love. His will is good, and it's perfect. It's awesome, and He wants you to know that. And when you live by His conditions, you're going to have what you've sown given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So when you do good, good will be given back to you. When you sow evil, evil will be given back to you. And so His Word says that His desire for you, His dream for you, is more than you can dream for yourself more than you can ask or think, more than you can desire. So he not only has put his desire in you and wants to give you the desires of your heart, but he has more for you than you even thought of for yourself. And so even in maybe having the wrong thought of what you want to do with your life, he has something better for you to do. He put gifts and talents on the inside of you. 
so that you could prosper, so your gift would prosper you. It would make room for you. But if you go and do something else that you decided to do yourself, you you may prosper to a point, but you're not going to prosper in your spirit, your soul, and your body. You're not going to have happiness, peace, joy, and contentment because you're out of His will. And of course, you're not going to live with Him for eternal life because the thing that He has for you to do is not only for you, but it's for others for you to bless them. And it's for Him to bring happiness, peace, and joy to the world, to bring His will, His, His intention. Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plan I have for you. It's good. It's not to harm you. And He wants that good for all of His children. And so when you're doing His will and you're blessing those people who he assigned for you to bless with a gift that he gave you to give where he asked you to give it, then that blessing just circles. And it's what he intended. But if he gave you a gift um, to just maybe be a worship leader, and as that worship leader, bringing people into his presence and, and and so much goes with that gift, but you don't do that. You go off and you do something else. You're not working in His kingdom. You're not bringing His will to pass. You haven't considered Him. That's sad, and that makes Him sad. It makes Him sad that if you haven't taken the time to get to know Him, to find out how good He is, and that He wants to give you life to the full until it overflows. If you haven't taken the, the course, the action of going to a church and getting to know Him, opening up the Word of God, seeking Him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind, that, that, that hurts Him. You're His child, and He wants you to know Him. And He's gone to great lengths to show you who He is. And He's called many to tell about who He is, to get your attention. But if you just keep ignoring Him, if if you don't give Him the time of day, there isn't anything else He can do. And He's giving us until He gets here to do that. And so His will is His good desires for you, His, His plan, not your plan. And you have to humble yourself to the place where you where you can believe that his will is better for you than your own if you're going to be self-willed then you're not going to know his will if you're going to be self-willed you're not going to live that good life that he intended for you life to the full until it overflows you're not going to even know it if you're going to be self-willed he wants you to know what he's thinking. He wants you to know his intention. He wants you to want him. He created you. He designed your life ahead of time for you. He, he said that he has a good predestined plan for you. And don't get the wrong idea. It's a good plan. It's better than what you can think of for yourself. And it's a path that leads to the good life. And so, if you're not doing His will, you're off here on another path, and His will isn't being done in your life, and that bothers Him because He has so much good for you that He can't do because you're ignoring Him. If you don't open the book, if you don't give Him a chance, you're ignoring Him. And He doesn't want you to ignore Him. And as we talked about yesterday, when you know His will and you do His will, you're preparing for eternal life. And yesterday we talked about already acting like we live with Him. And when we act like we live with Him, then we're going to be more aware of Him and His presence. And that's what He wants. He wants you to be aware of Him. Look at the Word of God and see what He thinks, how He feels. Look at His good intentions. Look at His promises. So you can know Him, so you can trust Him, so you want to do His will. 
He has more for you than you can ask or think, Ephesians 3.20. More than you can imagine. More good than you can think of by yourself. Wow, he just spoke something to me that I had let go of, a promise, and how I was thinking that this is good enough for me. And he said, no, I have more for you than that. I have more for you than that. More than you're thinking. How exciting is that? And so maybe you have a dream of having um, a big family and um, just a nice house, an average house, and just the normal stuff, you know, that not asking too much. But he has more for you than that. More than you're thinking. Maybe he wants a better house for you. Maybe, you know, he has a, a, a plan where um, you're going to have more children than you thought because um, those children that you have really aren't enough for you because you're the kind of person that wants more children than you're thinking that you can handle. Maybe it's financially for one reason or another. Now, that's just an example. I don't know. I don't know how many people would want so many kids, but um, I, I think a handful are, are amazing. But, you know, some people go and have 10 kids, and and they're blessed, and, and, and their needs are met, and maybe they're walking in God's plan, and you're just having one because you're afraid you can't afford two or three. I don't know. I'm just going off on a little tangent here just to give the example that he wants more for you and and the more for you is what you desire but you're afraid to believe that or haven't even thought of it ephesians 3 20 and the amplified bible says he has more for you than you can even think of he has a good life planned for you so you can't the whole thing he said is why people aren't doing his will because they don't know it I mean, of course, we know it's good to do good to others. We, we know it's good to be kind and to give to who's asking of you. And do we know that giving will be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over? Instead, do we put all our energy in trying to find things to sell? But God's way is give, and then He can give back to you pressed down, shaken together, and running over. When you seek His way of doing and being right, what you need will be given out, given to you, so you won't have to run after it. We spend all this time, Jesus said, worrying about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and what we're going to wear. And we don't need to. We can spend our time doing His will. Not worrying about what we're going to eat, what we're going to drink, and what we're going to wear, but doing His will. How's it, how exciting is that? To, to just know that when you give, when you're generous, He's going to take care of you and you're going to have what you gave plus given back to you. To know that when you're kind and when, when you care and you're compassionate and when you refuse to talk about somebody, when you think the best of every person, when you spend that time sitting at Jesus' feet, where he can change you, when you do all those things that he's asking you to do, you're doing his will, and everything is going to be wonderful because you believe. And when you believe, you're going to do his will because you know his will is good. You know he has good intentions for you. And you won't be wandering off looking for something else because you know you have the precious pearl right in front of you. Jesus living on the inside of you. And his promises, his promises, you can go to him and receive his promise. And if there is a reason you're not receiving his promise is you misunderstood his will somewhere because he is good, he is perfect, and he is in love with you, and he wants to give you more than you can think of. How amazing is that? And so to be that person on that day that's not confused and saying, but Lord, we did this in your name, we did that. To not be that person, find out his will. 
find out his wish for you. I think this is so amazing. What one wishes or has determined shall be done. The purpose of God is to bless mankind. That's his will for you, to bless you. He has no intention of hurting you. And, you know, maybe you're thinking, well, why is there hell then for the devil? And his angel's not for you. It wasn't his intention you would follow the enemy, that you would enjoy evil, or, or that you wouldn't take the time to get to know your creator or receive what he has for you. He said, if you do what he said, you're going to be blessed in the city, blessed in the country. Blessed when you go in the door, blessed when you come out of the door. Bless, bless, bless. But we get off of his will by not paying attention to him. You know, we were talking yesterday when we live with him, our attention's going to be on him all the time in heaven because he's going to be right there. And now you can't see him, although he's here. You can't see him, and so you ignore him. And you even get confused. And the enemy comes dressed as an angel of light, and so... Sometimes we follow after him because we're not paying attention to Jesus. So the most important thing is to take time, spend time with him. Spend time with him so you can get to know him, so you can do his will. So that on that day, you're not saying, but I, but I thought, right? And he won't be saying, I didn't know you. I wasn't worthy of your time. You didn't look me up. You didn't message me. You didn't call me. You lived your life for you. And so, you know, why would you want to move in with someone you don't even know? You don't have time for him. You don't even know if you like him. But you're, pl you're planning on moving in with him. That is just silly. That is really not a thought-out plan at all. Think about it. You want to know that person that you think you're going to move in with. Any other thinking is ridiculous. He said, if you, he said he's knocking at the door of your heart, Revelation 3.20, and if you would heed his voice, he would come and live on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit would come. If you heed his voice, if you do his will, if you humble yourself before him, which takes getting to know him, if you do that, he's going to come and live on the inside of you. The Holy Spirit's going to teach you. He's going to teach you the ways of the kingdom. He's going to teach you the commands and why they're important. He's going to help you to do them. He's going to correct you and teach you, remind you of things to come, remind you of things he said and tell you things to come. He's telling us he's coming and the time is short. It's time to get ready. He's not here yet because he doesn't want you to perish. It's time for him to come. The suffering is enough He's grieving, he's hurting, he wants to come. But his own people don't even know him. And if he came today, they would perish. And he doesn't want it that way. And so the suffering, going on, suffering goes on. You know, a lot of people say, well, if God loves us, why is all this happening? Because if he comes now, too many will perish. Now's your time. Get ready. When he gets here, it'll be too late. Get ready. He's coming. He's coming. Ask him to be your Lord. Submit to him. Ask him to help you. If you have an addiction or something, you don't need the world's plan. You go to Jesus, and he'll show you. Whatever problem you have in your life, he's going to show you the answer, because he knows the answer. Thanks so much for listening today. God bless you.